So this Iron Condors option course covers everything I can think of. I've put a lot of time in here and I've built out a large database of videos that cover every aspect of one of my favorite strategies in our portfolio, the VTS Iron Condor strategy. Now, if you want access to it, I'm not charging any money here. All you have to do is sign up for the free two week trial on my website or in the description down below and you'll immediately gain access to the course. I want all of you to become expert Iron Condor traders because this skill of trading market neutral option strategies can form the base of your portfolio for the rest of your life. With that as the foundation, you can build out all of the rest around it, so you definitely want to know how to do this. Today I'm breaking down the 10 rules of engagement for the Iron Condor strategy. Now, it's a little longer video here, but you definitely want to watch the whole thing because I'm laying it all out in a checklist for you from start to finish. So you'll have the basic idea while you're working through the rest of the course. Starting with rule number one, we only trade highly liquid ETFs. Now, there's actually two components to this rule. First, the ETF part. It means we don't actually trade individual stocks within the iron condor strategy. Now, for options trading in general, there's nothing wrong at all with individual stocks. I use them as well, especially for things like earnings trades, dividend harvesting, stock replacement. But but since the iron condor strategy is meant to be a strong foundation within a diversified portfolio, we can reduce some of the volatility by keeping it to ETFs. The S&P 500, the Nasdaq, bonds, utilities, real estate, gold, these make much better iron condor targets. Second is the liquidity part. If on every trade you're losing a few pennies on the entry and then a few pennies on the exit, while it may not seem like a big deal, that inefficiency can really start to add up in the long run. Two to three percent on both the entry and the exit, and now all of a sudden your rate of return is not nearly as impressive. So rule Number one, stick to only the most liquid ETFs that track broad indexes. Rule number two, we open iron condors during mid to high volatility, and we open calendar options during times of lower volatility. Now, there's entire lessons in this course dedicated to explaining the volatility component and what volatility indicators you can use to filter for low, mid, and high levels. But just remember that while iron condors are definitely a great trade, no individual strategy performs well in all market environments. Iron condors work great for mid to high volatility because they are short vega, they're short volatility. If volatility comes down, you can make your profit quicker. But when volatility is already at a low level, they do become more risky because now it's a lower starting point. There's a lot of room there for volatility to rise after you open it, which will negatively impact your trade. So check out both of those extended lessons, but just remember iron condors for mid to high volatility and calendars for low volatility environments. Rule number three, we don't open new trades during strong trend points. This one is very helpful for avoiding whipsaw. This is the S&P 500, the SPY ETF. ETF for 2022, and we've been in a mid to high volatility environment for the whole year, so all trades should be iron condors. Remember, that's the previous rule number two. However, when you're targeting your entry points for new trades, you don't want to open them during very strong trends, either up or down. So for example, right here, this was a strong uptrend several weeks in a row of positive market gains. You don't want to open up new iron condors at any point during this rise. What's better is waiting for a little bit of a pullback like here, and then you can initiate a new trade after it's got a little bit closer to the medium term average. And the reason for this is that markets don't go up or down forever. And whenever the market flips its switch and you see one of those reversals, they can be quite strong. If you initiate your trades in the heart of a strong trend, that reversal could stop you out very quickly. But if you do wait for one of those reversal points, then it's possible that you can be able to stay in the trade for a little bit longer, even if it does have one of those strong reversal points. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can't see the future, how am I going to know that I'm in a strong trend and that I should wait? That's a good point, but we'll take this recent action as an example. I can't see the future either, but I would qualify this as a strong uptrend in the market. I'm personally not going to open a new iron condor until I see a little bit of a reversal. have to see some weakness first. It has to get a little bit closer to its medium term average. Now, I could have initiated one right here, and I actually did, but right now this trend is very strong, and it is going to require patience before getting into a new trade. Being patient and waiting for a small reversal before opening a new trade can really cut down on those times where you're in and then quickly stop out. Rule number four, we target roughly 45 to 75 days to expiration for any new trades. So again, this is the S&P 500 ETF and we're looking at all the potential expiration cycles here. We can see we've got a lot to choose from, from something as close as one day all the way down to 841 days. That's March 2025. Now, generally speaking, the shorter the expiration 
cycle, the more potentially risky the trade will be. This is because two things happen when you use shorter dated contracts. First, the premium is going to be much lower and the wings on the iron condor will be very narrow. There's not a whole lot of room for error on these. And secondly, the delta and gamma are potentially very high and these shorter dated contracts move very quickly. If the underlying security does make a big move, that can push your trade way past the level that you'd be stopping out at. And you can lose a lot more than you wanted to allow for quite quickly. Longer dated contracts widen the wings and make those trades slower moving. So even if they do go badly, you can always stop loss out at a reasonable level. So the question is from one day to four years, what's the ideal range? Well, for me personally, if I could choose the perfect expiration, I would go with something at 60 days. That strikes a good balance between allowing for many trades throughout the year, but also making sure that they're wide wing and slower moving to increase the margin for error. But we can't always choose 60 days, so I allow for 15 up and 15 down as well, and that means the ideal is 45 to 75 days. Now remember, calendar spreads use two different months in their construction, a near month and a far month. So when we say 45 to 75 days, for calendar options, that means the near month contract. And then the far month contract, you just choose a month further out. Rule number five has to do with strike selection. For the short strike of our iron condors, we target less than or equal to 15 delta on both sides. Again, looking at the SPY ETF, if I was opening a new trade right now, you can see there isn't anything at that perfect 60 day expiration. 78 is a little bit too far. 43, of course, is just inside it. So we would have to go with this one at 50. Now here's the delta column right here on the put side. And we just need to scroll down and find that 15 delta option. Right now you can see that it's on this 374 strike. Now remember one of the previous rules is that we look for high liquidity. And since liquidity is always better on the fives and the zeros, this 375 is actually the highest liquidity strike closest to a 15 delta. But it's too high, that's a 16 delta. So I would actually drop it down to this 13 and I would use the 370 strike. And remember this is for the short strike of the trade. So for the long strike, we would just go the next high liquidity option outside that, which would be this 365. Then we do the same thing on the call side. Here's the delta here. We're going to scroll down and we're going to try to find that 15 delta option. It's right here. And that one's at 435. That's going to be our short call strike for this trade. And then again, for the long strike, we just find the next high liquidity option. That's going to be the 440. So for selecting that short strike on an iron condor, you want to find the 15 delta on both the put side and and the call side, and that's the ideal short strike. Then the long strike is just the next high liquidity one further out. For calendars, these are done at the money, so it doesn't apply. For calendars, you just select a high liquidity strike as close to the money as possible. Rule number six is that for iron condors, we allocate 3% of our total net liquidation value to each iron condor trade. And for calendars, they do move a little bit differently, so it's a 2% allocation. Now this rule is a little bit more technical because there is a quick calculation involved, but don't worry, it's super easy. And there's a full lesson in this course dedicated to allocation size, but I'll just show you a really quick example right now. So the trade we were just talking about is this one down here, 370 short put and 435 short call. And it looks like this. Now, if I want to allocate 3% to this trade, it just means the maximum loss for the trade is equal to 3% of the total value of the account. So this is our public live stream account, and there's currently $275,350. I would just take 3% of that number, which is about 8,260, and I would adjust the contract size until I'm risking that amount. So right now, one contract, the maximum loss is $385. If I change this to 20 contracts, now I'm risking 7,700. Getting closer, but not quite there. So if I go up to 21, now I'm risking 8,085. Still not quite there. Let's go see 22. Now it's 8,470. That's too much. That's over the 3% allocation. So I could drop this back to 21 contracts, and this is now the correct size. Now for calendar options, this is even easier. Remember, these take place at that closest strike at the money. And we use a 2% allocation for calendars. So if we take 2% of our total net liquidation value, that's 5,000. First, we divide by 100 because each one option contract represents 100 shares of the underlying. And because it's a debit spread, meaning we're paying a premium to open the contract, the maximum loss is just the full premium paid. So now we just take that number and we divide by the premium, which in this case is 311. For this calendar trade, it would actually be 17 contracts. This is now sized correctly at just under 2% allocation. So very easy stuff. You can do this in about 20 seconds, but for iron condors, it's a 3 
3% allocation. And for calendars, it's a 2% allocation. And I will remind you that if you use the spreadsheet that you downloaded, that contract size is calculated for you, so it's even easier. And you're going to have a long-term trade record for future analysis. Rule number seven is that we allow for up to three trades to be open at the same time. So I've shown you now how to choose the expiration, the strikes, and the contract size. And now we have a rule that we can allow three of these to be open at the same time. Instead of allocating all our iron condor capital to just one large trade, it's much better from a risk management standpoint to divide the capital up and do several smaller trades. This way we can diversify our positions across different expiration cycles, different price ranges, volatility levels, and even different asset classes altogether. So not only is the iron condor strategy just one part of the diversified total portfolio solution, but the iron condor strategy itself is also diversified across two to three different trades. A diversified strategy within a diversified portfolio. Rule number eight is that for iron condors, we use a 50% stop loss and 50% stop gain on each trade. And for calendar options, because they move a little differently, we use 25% levels instead. Again, we're looking at this iron condor that we've been talking about. And if I were to open the trade right now, the premium would be $1.15. The stops are based on this premium collected. So a 50% stop loss just means that when the price is over 1.5 times what we collected, 1.15 premium times 1.5 is rounded to $1.73. If this premium hits $1.73, then we would close out the trade for a loss. The stop gain is also based on the premium collected. 1.15 premium times 0.5 is rounded to 58 cents. If the premium on this trade drops below 58 cents, we close the trade for our profit. So when I'm trading, whenever I do my live trades, I also just leave these open and I can easily see the premium that it's currently trading at. So I can track these numbers day to day. Now worth noting, if your software doesn't make it quite this easy, you can also convert these to dollar amounts very easily as well. Remember, one option contract is equal to 100 shares of the underlying. So if I want to know the dollar amount that coincides with a 58 cent gain or loss, we just multiply by 21 times 100. That's $1,218. I can just put 1218 right on this trade, something close to there. And then for this one, we can move this in and find something close to 1218. Now I can visually see my stop losses. Now for the calendar option, it is the same thing, but these things move a little differently. So now we use a 25% level. The stop loss on a debit spread is when the trade loses 25%. So 311 times 0.75 is 233. If the trade drops below that, we take our loss. The stop gain on a debit spread is 311 times 1.25. Remember, we paid the premium. So when it goes higher, we're actually making money. And that's it. 389. If it goes up above that, we take our profit and we close the trade. And again, I'll remind you that the spreadsheet calculates all the stop losses automatically, so you can try to use that and see if you like it. We don't want to wait the full 45 to 75 days to expiration for each of the trades that we open. The opportunity cost of tying up that much capital for that long just isn't efficient long term. This is why we use both a stop loss and a stop gain for every trade. When we achieve our goal, we get out of the position and we can cycle through many more trades and actually increase the rate of return. Iron Condors, you use 50% stops and calendars use 25% stops. Rule number nine is that we only add additional layers in the same expiration cycle if the underlying security we're trading moves by more than 4%. So for example, this trade that we've been talking about, here's the current price right in the middle. Now it's normal for prices to fluctuate up and down. You can just expect that on every trade. But the only way that I would ever open another iron condor using this same expiration cycle would be if the underlying price made a major move and it was actually more than 4% in either direction. So let's say it made a major move down and it dropped by more than 4%. At that point, I could just add another iron condor cycle that's centered around the new trade. Now, keep in mind, remember, we use iron condors roughly 45 to 75 days to expiration. So even if the underlying does move by 4% and we have a green light to open another layer, you'd still have to check over here to see if there's an expiration cycle further out that's more appropriate. If it's available, you would take that and you wouldn't use the same cycle anyway. It's actually pretty pretty rare for me to open a second iron condor in the same expiration cycle on the same underlying security. But if it has moved more than 4% in either direction, and we do have plenty of time in the current cycle, then this is an option for us. And the last rule number 10 is that every trade we take in the iron condor strategy, both condors and calendars, should be treated as independent of everything else you have open in your portfolio. We're not opening iron condors over here to try to balance something else out in the rest of the portfolio. Remember, my style of investing is a diversified 
diversified iron condor strategy within a larger diversified portfolio. And all of those individual strategies are traded independently of one another. Most of these rules I've covered today have their own dedicated video within the iron condor series, which breaks down all the concepts even further. So definitely check those out as well. Like I said, I'm trying to teach you a very valuable trading skill here that you can use for the rest of your life. And I personally believe that everybody's investment portfolio should have some allocation to market neutral option strategies like iron condors and calendars. So for an extensive volatility metrics dashboard updated daily and to see all of the live trades for our tactical rotation and option strategies, click this link right here and claim your free trial to the VTS community. You're always welcome to join us anytime. See you next time.